the important thing that you were going to tell us after this all fell apart? I mean, it's, I guess you could call it important. I was thinking more timely, because it involves an important question I want to ask you, and that is, why are we here? Fellowship and connection. There you go. Great. It's a great starting point. You could also give the obvious answer, which is, we're going rafting. All right. That is actually a big part. We're here to basically have this bonfire and go home. No, we're going rafting. I wasn't sure, like, if you were saying, Psych. Are here, here, or, like, why are we on Earth? <laughs> well, guys, I wanted to ask because I think it's good to know the answer before we hit up the river tomorrow. I just felt like it was right to cast some vision, like tonight to be about casting vision for tomorrow, and then tomorrow will be a time where we cast vision for the rest of the summer. You guys with me? So I think that's kind of how I felt like the breakdown needed to go. Um, so, Landon, you're on the right track. I mean, there, there were many right answers, but the two that I wrote down that I want to center this talk on is you know, to experience God in a fresh way and to experience oneness through challenge. We've been talking about fellowship uh, and early church. Uh, for those who um, maybe haven't been with us the past few months and We've been going back to the first four or five chapters in Acts. And we've been talking about that oneness that early church believers had. And I think one of the ways that bonds tighter together is through adversity. And you do realize, guys, you are part of legacy history. In the sense that this is the fourth time we've hit up the Echoe. Actually, I could stretch that out. Um, this is actually the fifth time that a gate youth body has done this trip this is the fourth time in five years and this is the first time that we're doing the whole river and I was praying into this trip and just saying God I just don't want this to be another you know we take we tackle the river make some memories you know sing a few songs and that's it you know I really want this trip to stand out to be different um, so God show me tell me how you want us to approach this trip because I really don't want rafting to be the only thing that I remember. And then I just believe that God wants the river this year to represent not only what we're about, but where we're going as a group in the sense that we take hold of that next level, in the sense that we go deeper and further with our faith than ever before. And actually, you know, my, the decision to do the entire river was, I mean, pretty simple, I'll be honest, because you guys wanted to. <laughs> I was like, hey, I got some input from some of you, and you're like, what should we do differently next year? Let's do the whole river. But the more I thought about it, it's like, man, this really could be um, kind of the picture of the year, like an experience that sets a tone, that refreshes our perspective and trajectory. Um, but kind of like when we think back on 2017, it's one of those lasting impressions that we take away with us. Um, and so, We'll be taking on more water, obviously. We take on more river, you take on more water. And if you've been tracking, not only when what we've been talking about lately, but also just the church at large, um, you know that one of the, the big work pictures coming out of the sanctuary is that of the faucet. Does that resonate with anybody? Remember just yeah. what's been talking about being under the faucet? And I was just thinking how more river, more water, that's like what being under the faucet's all about. <laughs> that we get in it more inundated. And with more water comes more opportunity, more opportunity to be dependent on the Lord's direction, to be leaning on his, on his leadership, on, on his leading, and opportunity to abide in that effortless flow of grace. And I know sometimes it's easy to be overwhelmed by more. It's like we think we, oh, I don't know if I could handle it. I don't know if I could reach that next level in my journey, in my walk, in my faith. And, you know, doubt starts to creep in. But if we approach our walk with the Lord, our faith, our unity, the challenges in life, the same way we're going into tomorrow, that's what was really convicting me on the way here. I was like, 
you know, it's not rocket science. God was like, Cameron, how do you feel about going to this trip? I'm like, I'm excited. <laughs> I get to be around some of my favorite people doing one of my favorite summer activities. <laughs> I'm excited. And then I thought, am I, am I the same way when I think about being under the faucet with God? Where he could download what he wants to tell me. He could fresh that perspective. He could show me more of his love and just be being near to him. So that was one of the pre-trip challenges that God just illuminated within me. Um, it's like I almost felt convicted. No, what? I did feel convicted. <laughs> I need to be excited about being out of the faucet more and be less intimidated. All that to say, just let, let's let this trip, let's let the next 36 hours be something that not only refreshes us, but reinvigorates us. Does that make sense? There's a difference between those two words. I think a lot of times we come here and we're refreshed and we go back, it's like, oh, that was, oh, that was, that was a sweet time. And I want that, this trip to be that. But I'm almost glad we have more time to be together because I feel like um, even though we're talking a lot about river, there's also a mountain component. That's another thing that God reminded me of. We're coming here, we think about river, but look around. Where, where else are we? We're in the mountains too. Like it's one of those unique geographical places where there's both mountain and river. So the river is like the faucet, like that refreshing water. And then you have the mountain where, you know, we get to retreat with God. Think back in the Old Testament where Moses, he, he went up to the mountain by himself and re, he represented the people. Um, he represented the masses, but we get to all retreat up to the mountain together and enjoy his presence. Just don't let this trip be another trip. Don't let this summer be another summer. Don't break from God when you're when you're meant to break with him. Um, so let's make him the center of what we do. Does that make sense? That's really all I wanted to say. I just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page together with that. Cool, so. I just felt like I needed to share that with you guys tonight. One thing I will say that I forgot to mention earlier is, um, you know, tonight is purely, it was purely setting the table and experience and, and, and word, but um, I want to do something tomorrow that is a little different, and that is, it ties into the past couple of Wednesdays for those, you may have gotten the hint by now, but um, this summer, we're kind of uh, going to be talking more about what fullness looks like. We've been talking about oneness. We're going to parlay that into f fullness. Um, and I think it's going to be awesome if we take certain nights. Tomorrow night could be like the start, but certain nights throughout the summer where we just come before the Lord and we're just like, I want to be filled by you. And I want to encourage you to start thinking about what it is you want to be filled with more of I should say for instance I'm not satisfied in how much I've been trusting God lately so I feel like I could say God I need you to fill me with more trust I need you to purify my hope in you um, I need to be filled with with that so I'm not leaning on my own ways and understanding that's just an example um, and then so the goal is then that tomorrow we take time and we just pray for those who are willing to say, yes, I want to be filled with this, and I, I'm not afraid to say it. <laughs> I want um, the body to rally behind me and keep me accountable. Um, maybe love is the key word for you. It's like you want to be filled with more love or more courage, more boldness. Just be thinking the next, I'm giving you kind of a 24-hour period, no pressure. You don't have to say it. You don't have to be prayed for if you don't want um, but I want you guys to know we're going to have that opportunity to pray for one another tomorrow. So, that's all. Does that sound good?